Hello. Today we visit an r slash ask reddit post to ask why don't you talk to that family member anymore. Make sure to comment if you have any family drama. Don't worry my family has plenty of drama and has stopped talking to one of my uncles. I don't usually ask for like targets but can we try to get to 10 likes. With that sit back and enjoy. When at my sister's funeral they told me I had no reason to cry because I wasn't really family because I was adopted. I was adopted within my own family. We were still biologically related. The duck? Even if you weren't bio-related, why would you be criticized for crying? I have a different dad from my sister, when he died, my sister had to leave work she was so upset, she sobbed and sobbed. My dad was like an uncle to her, but in no way were they related. I was at a funeral for my friend's grandpa. Her cousin, not related to the grandpa, told my friend to stop crying. Or you'll make me emotional. And maybe I'll cry. And then everyone will cry. Like what? Her grandpa died. She's allowed to cry. Maybe she was just being an awkward teenager, but that always struck me wrong. At the very least, it was uncouth. Tragedy is a hell of a time. People are, quite literally, short-circuiting all around you. They respond in insane ways because their wires are very crossed, and no one really knows the right way to act. They are just reacting. Not that it's necessarily absolution for a dick being a dick, but it deserves to be remembered that a bomb just dropped on everyone present, and no one is really, themselves, at that time. Everyone is trying to cope, and mistakes will be made. I'm a funeral director. This is so accurate and true. When the ex-husband got released from jail for spousal abuse and restraining order violations, she gave him my new home address. What the duck? My first marriage broke up after five months, before the divorce was final a police lieutenant said if the ex had succeeded in kidnapping me, he would have killed me. The police believed me and the judge believed me but my mother didn't. If there's one useful thing to draw from this, please don't dismiss a young person who wants to confide in you that one of their parents isn't normal. So many people brushed it off with, you'll understand when you're older, and, she's trying her best, that I kept trying. Would have been better off if I'd followed my gut and estranged from her sooner. She's a very angry person. Stole our grandpa's identity, his dad and ruined him financially. Then when his brother died, tried stealing money from his sister, my mom and conning his way into things that didn't belong to him. When my mom passed, he asked for her social security number, told me it was for an old insurance policy their brother, referenced above worth like 400 bucks. I told him I wanted more info, looked into it and it was 76k that he was trying to claim entirely for himself instead of me and my sibling getting my mom's share. Duck that guy. Edit, it's my uncle. His dad didn't want him to go to prison so nothing came of the identity theft. Not talking to him is all you're doing? That's pretty light compared to what he deserves. Tried to steal my grandmother's money after she died. My brother, a toxic dangerous narcissist robbed my mom into poverty. She sacrificed literally every penny and went even in debt to cover for his lifestyle. Every time I bailed her out, I knew I was funding her toxic relationship with him. When she was finally dying of cancer, and having a million other issues and struggles both my sister, totally different story, and my brother were ducking nowhere to be seen. I stepped in and stepped up to help her out of her misery making huge sacrifices career-wise, financially getting in debts myself, medical bills through the roof, and her house basically needed entire renovations. Let alone mentally a being constantly exposed to extreme hardship and misery of someone you loved the most. Even my big loved one, just left me six months into this rough situation, nothing as unsexy as a man struggling, bleeding and suffering to help out a loved one I guess. Anyway, I carried my mum alone on my own shoulders till her very dying breath. Holding her hands while people close to her heart just turned their backs and left. Regardless I showed them nothing but care and loyalty through my entire life. Since the funeral almost three years ago, died first week after New Year's, I haven't spoken to any of them. May they all go duck themselves in eternity, to me they simply do not exist any longer. What pieces of shit. Narcissists in the family are the absolute worst. Did they try reaching out to you in those three years? My brother no, for him I care the least. No one knows what he is doing with his life or even where he is. My best guess is he is making other people's lives into a misery by manipulating and lying to them. My ex I will never hear from her again as it was me eventually who slammed the door shut firmly. She just took off, no explanation, found a job in Washington, living in Europe by the way and that was it. 
right after my mom was actually making some miraculous progresses thanks to all the help and medical care. It all plummeted badly after my relationship broke, she took quite the guilt on her. But she is in her mid-30s, completely breaking suddenly with her entire life, entourage and me, all for a job. Resetting her entire life. Since that was all right before the pandemic, I can only imagine the fun for her being all alone trying to build up a new life during a global lockdown. My sister is the only one that reached out. But that was more because she struggled as well with many things. Then she is like, but I am your sister, lol. She is well aware she just stood by why I was lifting a mountain totally crippling me. She reached out yes, but I haven't sensed one bit of an attempt for perhaps an apology. So all the more reason for me to keep that door quite shut as well. Thanks to having amazing friends I am doing quite well now in life, great job and wiped out debts. But on a human personal level prices were paid that are beyond repair. They expect me to respect their boundaries but don't respect mine. Boundaries are the most important thing to stay healthy mentally with people close to you. Stay strong. I made the mistake to ignore them and it almost ruined my life. Her husband pointed a loaded gun at my husband's head. My husband didn't need parents anyway. What happened to get to that point? Son, your stepdad is threatening to kill himself. Please go to our house and stop him. My wife's mom. Among other things she attempted to burn down my house. Whilst her daughter and grandson were inside. She's a piece of shit who's going to die bitter and alone and that's just fine by all of her kids. I too have come for the story. I, and a few of my brethrens have gathered around in a circle to listen to the story. Can I join too? She'd always been a nasty piece of work. A horrible narcissistic woman. Only ever looked out for herself. Especially in years gone by whilst she raised her kids. Although her kids definitely raised themselves and they did a cracking job of it. On the event in question she came round our house late one night unannounced and drunk. I was away that night and probably a good job I was too because I would have actually killed her. She wanted to see her grandson. My wife refused and left her on the doorstep. A row occurred and my wire essentially told the mother-in-law exactly what her kids thought of her, and that she should leave. Instead of leaving she started pushing lit paper from the recycling bin through the letterbox. We had a lucky escape. She managed to really shovel a lot of fuel onto the fire before my wife noticed a burning smell. If the coats hanging in the hallway had caught it could have easily been a different story. The really sad thing is my son lost a grandma that night. We won't, can't have anything to do with her anymore. Mentally ill or not. It doesn't matter when someone brings such horrors to your life. Because he was hitting on the nurse in the room where my mother was being compassionately extubated. Oh yeah, he's my dad. I am so sorry. This sounds like my dad. He cheated on my mother while she was dying of cancer would be sexually suggestive to even underage girls and thought it was both normal and hilarious. He did this before, during, and after my mom's death. He is a pervert and a horrible person for so many reasons that only begin here. I tried to forgive him, but I really, really shouldn't have. I thought there must be a limit to his depravity, but there isn't. When my daughter was two years old I caught him lifting her up in the air and looking under her dress. It was then that I remembered all of the times he would, accidentally, walk in on me in the bath when I was growing up. Part of me wonders if there is anything else I repressed, and part of me never, ever wants to know. You and your mother both deserved better than the kind of person who would do that. I supported my 46-year-old son all his adult life. Through raising two of his children. I was spending too much money and I was going broke myself. When he wanted to move in with his girlfriend I said no more and that he had to stand up for themselves. Of course I was a freaking bitch and haven't seen or heard from him for over a year. He hasn't even checked on his kids. Not birthdays or Christmas. There are many reasons beyond this, but the final straw was from the last time I saw my step-grandfather. Went to empty the dishwasher for him, and he was at the sink, so I waited for him to move so I could wash my hands, and he looked at me and, well why don't you duck and empty it then? And I simply said, I am just waiting for you to move so I can wash my hands, and his response was, stop being a smartass. I told him, that's pretty rude considering I am trying to help you. And he decided that attempting to fight me over that was appropriate. This guy is old and broken, he can barely walk, breathe or do anything for himself, the very definition of a decrepit old has been. 
And yet he still got all up in my face with his fists raised and his eyes filled with hate. I said, really dude? Do you actually think you could do anything? I could blow on you and you would fall over. I would never want to fight someone in that condition, but I made it clear I would defend myself if he attacked me. He kept on trying to come at me. Eventually I got fed up with his shit, opened my arms wide, and said, go ahead, I dare you. I'll even give you the first shot, but I guarantee I'll get the last one. And he finally backed down when he realized he couldn't intimidate me like he could when I was a kid. My brother turned me in for social security fraud. Needless to say I'm not committing any fraud. Had I been convicted I would have a $250,000 fine, and would have gone to jail for 5 years. He can suck my dick. He is dead to me. What? Did he actually have inclinations of you actually being fraudulent? Is he like a drug user and thought you were acting fraudulent in a psychosis episode? What's the story here? My brother lived out of state for three years in which he never saw me or knew of my disabilities. During that period he and his wife both applied for disability benefits and got denied. He said to me it's bullshit I should be the one sitting home on my ass collecting disability instead of you I have an issue with it. Within two weeks I got a letter from SS stating they have reason to believe that I am fraudulently receiving disability benefits. I had to give them all my medical information proving I am disabled. I can't believe that he's jealous of me that I'm disabled. I'm a private person my family doesn't know about all my illnesses. I appear to be okay but I'm disabled. Can you believe my mother said about all of this is that I can't prove anything so let it be? It was after a Christmas party. My mother manages a small hotel with rooms and two chalets. So she booked rooms for the family to sleep over after the party. One of my cousins took a chalet with her BF. It was only for one night, regular customers were coming the next day. All the family leave early the next day and so did my cousin. Customers who booked the chalet arrived early. So my mother showed them the chalet, assuming that the chalet will be clean enough and that the customers could leave their luggage there till the bed was made. There was pee on the wall. My cousin and their BF literally pee on the wall. My mother was shocked and made excuses to the customers. She called the dad of my cousin and we never saw her again. My sister. She stole approximately $30,000 from my dad and $10,000 from my mom. She got credit cards in my dad's name, too. He eventually had to file bankruptcy. The money she stole from my mom was all her savings that she desperately needed when she was leaning an abusive relationship. My parents were far from good parents, but they didn't deserve to have their financial life completely destroyed. I wish those were her only crimes. She was evil from as long as I can remember. She emotionally abused me and put me down for as long as I can remember. I was a sensitive kid, so I sadly believed everything she said. She tried to steal my friends and boyfriends. She ruined my clothes. She put me in unsafe and mature situations that took years of therapy to heal from. Her theft, manipulation, selfishness, and narcissism took so much away from me. There was no money for a first car, college, etc. After she took what she wanted my dad was a shell of a person, so he couldn't process how hard her actions had been on me, too. I lost all my protectors. I was alone. There's so much more I could share. I sometimes can't believe I experienced what I did because it's so bleak. I stopped all communication with her about 10 years ago and my life has positively changed as a result. I know she still tries to get friends and family to not like me because of heard stories. I don't care what she does and I don't care what anyone thinks. I know the truth and the trauma and I'm just happy to be free of her. My aunt bought Christmas present for my son, not my stepson. I asked politely if we could buy a present for him and say it was from her, she refused. I returned the present unopened. After that, I've barely spoken to her for 20 plus years. My aunt got my dad to change his will on his deathbed. Instead of everything going to my mom it went to my aunt. Some of the money went into a trust fund that my sister and I could only access at 25. When she released the money it was nowhere near the amount in terms of the interest it would have accrued during the years, in my case 24 years. When we questioned her she transferred a little bit extra but we couldn't be bothered fighting it. My mom had to sell the house to pay funeral costs as his family didn't want to help. With that, thank you for watching all the way until the end and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you cut off ties with any family members. If you want to continue to watch my content click one of the videos above. 
Until next time.